What's going on guys? Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And today we are continuing our series in The Monomyth, also known as The Hero's Journey, also known as The Fool's Journey. Before we go any further into the steps or stages, I wanted to take a step back and take a look at the reference materials that I'm using to come up with all of these videos. That way if you are out there in YouTube land and you're like, Josh, I want to know more about this subject, or Josh, you didn't cover this well enough, or, or Josh, what exactly did Joseph Campbell say about this particular subject? I'm here to give you, this in this video, the main reference material that I use when talking about the monomyth and the hero's journey. Again, this isn't going to be all inclusive, but these are the, the, the main books that I use when looking at the monomyth. Now, the first one and the most important, I believe, is this one, which is a hero, sorry, The Hero with a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell. If you guys haven't watched my basic overview of the monomyth, or maybe you didn't catch it the first time, Joseph Campbell is the main proponent, academic proponent for the monomyth. He is to mythology what Sigmund Freud was to psychology. And when you look at, to, just to give you a basic overview of who Joseph Campbell was, he was a comparative mythologist, which means he went and studied mythology stories from all around the world, from tribes and ancient cultures. And what he tried to do was find out what was similar in each one of these stories. And that was very different from most mythologists of his day who would try to f figure out what was different. So just doing that in and of itself really helped him come up with this monomyth idea or template. The other thing that Joseph Campbell did was he relied heavily on psychology and funny enough, Sigmund Freud for a lot of his, a lot of the points that he makes in, in his book. He, 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 the main, if I were to say anything else about the monomyth is that what Joseph Campbell is trying to say in the book is that the reason why all of these ancient stories have stuck around so long and why they're, they're so memorable and why we, we constantly keep going back to them and it seems like so many stories repeat the, the same process is because they all touch the audience on a psychological level. They hit them deep in the subconscious with their symbols and their motifs. And this is what causes people to feel something deep even after months have gone by since they've watched the movie or read the book or heard the story. So, and the way he did that was he would cite a lot of different aspects of psychoanalytics from Carl Jung or from Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung amongst others. So again, I consider this the Bible when it comes to the monomyth. This is a must have and a must read. And there, the thing to keep in mind is that Joseph Campbell was academic. So some of the writing is a little bit dry at times, but a lot of it is mind blowing, especially at the end of the book. Once he's gone through the process, he starts talking about some deeper subjects. The other thing that is really cool about this book is that you get as he explains the monomyth, he tells stories, ancient stories that you may not have heard before or that you may only have a brisk understanding of. He gives you a really good idea of, he, he, you get to learn more about all kinds of different myths from the old days. So again, that's The Hero with a Thousand Faces. The second book that I use to, to rely on is The Writer's Journey by Christopher Vogler. Christopher Vogler is currently 
a screenwriter in Hollywood. He's worked on several big name projects like Hunt for the Red October and some Disney movies like The Lion King. And the thing that I really like about the writer's journey is that he takes Joseph Campbell's work and he puts it in a contemporary point of view. He uses examples like the Titanic and the, the Wizard of Oz amongst others to give you a more contemporary look at stories from now, stories from Hollywood that have followed the structure. And the other thing that's really great, if particularly if you're someone who is in Hollywood, who writes scripts or who wishes to be, he uses a lot of Hollywood lingo. The final thing that I'll mention about Christopher Vogler's work that really helps me is Joseph Campbell gave broad strokes. These are the main 18 steps or so that are in the monomyth. Chris Vogler, he does something interesting. He takes some of those main steps and he condenses them. For example, in the initiation phase, there's five or six different steps. He condenses three or four of them into one step that he calls trials, tests, and allies. However, even though he condenses in some areas, as you read through the book, he talks in great depth about several, several very detailed things that you can do within those stages. These are things that Joseph Campbell didn't necessarily address because when he wrote it, when he wrote The Hero with a Thousand Faces, he wasn't necessarily writing it so that an author could sit down and write a book off of some template. He was writing it to show the connections between all of these mythologies. Chris Vogler, on the other hand, writes it in such a way, he writes it for a writer so that when you're sitting down, <coughs> pardon me, and you're looking at a particular step and you get stuck, you can reference and see like where have other stories done this recently and what are what are some sub steps that I can go to that would kind of get me out of this rut so very helpful the other books I'm gonna rush or kind of run through quickly those two are the most important these ones are what I would consider auxiliary ancillary the first one again by Joseph Campbell is called The Inner Reaches of Outer Space. Now, I haven't finished this book, but the main gist is twofold. One, the new mythology, Joseph Campbell said this once in an interview with Bill Moyers in The Power of the Myth. He truly believes that the next myth for society, for the human race, is going to be just that. It's not going to be for a tribe. It's not going to be for a country. It's going to be global. It's going to be for humankind as a whole. And it's going to represent a mythology for the future. So that's one of the key, exam uh, key points in this book. The other key point is that, as the title alludes to, it's called The Inner Reaches of Outer Space. Anything that's in space, meaning space-time, like the planets, the galaxy, the universe, all the way down to molecules and, and quantum physics, all of those things, they're all expressions of the world. But inside our mind, we too can understand those things and grasp them. And the example he used, so that you, maybe I'm not articulating this well, the example he used is, we decided to go to space after Kennedy's speech. And only, a, I think it was like, I don't know, five or 10 years later, we made it to the moon. That's a very short period of time for us to get from point A, from just thinking about doing something to doing something. And 
the real interesting aspect of that is that we had never before that time gone to the moon. And so in order for us to build a spacecraft that would launch from the Earth, go into the right orbit to get to the moon, land, and then come back, all of those things had never been done before. But yet we were able to determine all of the necessary tools and skills and abilities and mathematics that would be needed in order to do that. How do we do that? Because everything that is expressed in the world is also contained here in the mind. We just have to find it. And this is a subject for another video that I want to do about Einstein. But Einstein used to do, I forget the exact word, but he would call them like thinking experiments. A lot of the information and uh, thing, a lot of the, the things that Einstein is well known for, like the theory of, of gravity and E equals MC squared, all these things, he couldn't really test them out. The technology that we have today wasn't available then. These were things that he thought about and he imagined and he, they, all of the math, everything came from his mind and he, he constantly was thinking about how these things could work. Then he posted articles on them and it wasn't only, it wasn't until years later when other scientists with the right tools and the right time frames could study the moon and take pictures that they could see that Einstein's theories were correct. And that's when he started becoming a more credible source when, when other scientists could verify his theories. But those theories came along before the verification. They came along before the science was there. Because as Joseph Campbell tries to point out, everything that exists in the, in the world exists in the mind. And I know that seems, well, how does that apply to mythology? Many of the mythologies that we have, again, as I said before, touch on a very deep psychological level. And when you speak in symbol and myth, you touch a part of the brain, the subconscious, that is down there in that almost metaphysical world that can grasp things that are inarticulable, Ugh. are not able to be articulated with the tools that we have now. And then lastly, the couple others, these are all on my Kindle app, so I have to look here. The Anatomy of Story by John Truby. John Truby is another screenwriter. He's helped tweak, he's, he's helped tweak hundreds if not thousands of scripts in Hollywood and he's very well known in Hollywood for finding the flaws in stories and fixing them and one of his big proponents is mixing genres creating hybrids of genres so that you come up with something that's new and fresh but the one thing that he brings up in a lot of his speeches and in his book is that the myth genre is the oldest genre it's the most powerful and that's why it's lasted so long. We know it's a tried and true test. So he'll mention the myth aspects that are very much in tune with what Joseph Campbell brought to light several decades ago. The other story, the other book that I have not gotten to read all the way yet is Myth and the Movies, where the author Stuart, pardon me, I gotta look this, look this up. Stuart Voitilla, he worked with Christopher Vogler to study 50, I think it's 50 movies, contemporary movies that were big hits and identify what the mythological themes were and break down the structure of the monument, break them down into the structure of the monument. And the reason why that's so helpful is because if you understand how other stories have been built for that platform, when you're going to write your story, you can use that thought process. 
you can get into the mind of those other writers to see how they dealt with certain problems. So there's that. And then the final book that I'm going to mention is, if I can find it, I don't want to misname it here. It is the, the Modern Heroine's Journey of Consciousness. And essentially this book is about how a woman's journey is a little bit different from a man's. Now the hero's journey, I believe, is a very solid template that's not dependent on race or sex or anything like that. However, one of the big criticisms that Joseph Campbell received for his book was that it seemed to be very male-centric. But it wasn't because Joseph Campbell thought that, the, that it should be male-centric. It was that many of the mythologies that he pulled from were coming from, that was just the society that they came from. That's how they viewed their, their characters, their main heroes were normally, most of the time, males. He, he never thought that it should be male-centric and in several different areas, he's, he's at least touched on the fact that it it's, applies to everybody. This book, however, explains how you can get much more deeper into the feminine thought process. And the main gist, aside from the opening of the consciousness, is that the, the feminine process is to bring life back into the world. Uh, and a lot of times that deals, when you're talking about the highest level of life, it's consciousness. So, <coughs> so... These are the books that I would recommend if you're trying to learn about the hero's journey. Feel free, there are definitely more. These are the ones that I depend on the most. So as we go through these discussions, if you're ever wondering where I'm pulling this information from, that's where it comes from. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. And if you wanna hear more, like, share, and subscribe. All right, take it easy.